Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling exactly the same problem we did on the previous video on heat transfer, except for the caveat that now we're including the convective resistance. So we have now convective coefficients that were given, and we need to account for them, both on the inside and on the outside. Now, on the previous video, we calculated the heat flux going through this um, wall by getting a unit area of one and then using that, applying that for whatever area that we want because we want a heat flux, right? So after all, it doesn't really matter the area. This is going to be valid for whatever area this wall is. So we can keep a lot of those things that we found before. We don't have to delete them. We just need to include the new coefficients. So problem statement reads, a mansory wall consists of 100 mil brick outer face with 10 mil mortar joints, 200 mil concrete wall and a 10 mil insulating board on the inside as shown in the figure below. The outside and inside bulk temperatures are 40 and 25 degrees Celsius respectively. Determine the heat flux if the outside heat transfer coefficient is 15 um, and the inside film coefficient is 5 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Thermal conductivities are given below and the same as before. So now, not only, again, we're going from the outside, which is, oops, let me get this a better color. We're going again from the outside, which is at 40 Celsius. And the inside is 25, yeah, 25. So it's nothing changed in regards to this. We're still going from the outside to the inside, right? Now, the only thing that changed is that when we do our equivalent circuit, this guy here, instead of having only the convective, sorry, only the conductive resistances, we're going to have some extra resistances. So let me go ahead and re remove this and place it over here. And where I had the end, now I'm going to have the extra resistance, right? So now this is still 40. This is still 25, but now I have the outer conductive resistance. Let me do this in blue. So now I have the outer convective resistance and the inner convective resistance. So we're going to have two new resistances to sum up with we, what we're doing before. Okay, so everything else is exactly the same. What will change is that now we're going to have to sum two additional resistances. That's all. So how do we do that? Well, just like before, we're going to calculate these resistances and then we're going to account for them. So the first one. Let's start with the outer one, so convective out. That's just going to be 1 over the area and the coefficient. Let's just put O here to make sure we remember this is the outer one. And uh, the area, if you recall, we're assuming it to be 1. Now that is something that I found from your comments in class that you had trouble with. So let me just leave as the area for the sake of this, this problem here. And then we can see how what that means when we're applying the, the math, okay? So the outer coefficient 1 is uh, 15, was it? Oh, 15. 15. So this means that this is going to be 0 0.0666666 um, over the area. So that's just, but because we have it multiplied by the area there, we still have that meter square here on the top. Brilliant. Okay. The other one, very similar, also a convective resistance, but now for the inside, and we have the convective coefficient of 5. So same thing. HI, and this is the same thing as 1 over the area, 5, so that's 0.2, right? So that's 0.2 divided by the area that we don't know, we don't have, Kelvin meter square, watts. All right, now, when we are assuming a unit area of 1, what we're doing here is we're taking a little piece of this, and we're seeing that this piece is repeating, right? So we're taking this piece here that contains our repeating unit there, so it has the mortar and it has the brick, and also obviously the concrete and the insulating board, and we're seeing that that repeats over time. So what the other option is you can assume, well, some of you guys assumed there's a height here, and that this wall has four bricks and three mortar joints. And that is all right, it's not a problem per se, just it's not very really realistic because you're assuming that your wall is, what, a third of a meter? So it's a very, very small wall. It's kind of not realistic. Um, but of course, when you do that, you have the benefit of your repeating unit consisting of four bricks and three mortar joints, right? So in a way, it might be more precise if you remember to convert it back to um, to divide by the area that you're assuming. So that option will consist of, okay, you, you're saying that you have 75 times 4 bricks of height plus 10 times 3, in the, uh, three of the um, mortar joints, and that will be your height, right? And then you take your depth of 1, and you see what is that area, and that's going to be 0.33 or so. And then by the end of it, when you find your heat, your, uh, heat for this, so your Q, your big Q for this, what you do is you then divide it by the area that you found, so by this area here, and that's going to give you heat flux. So that works too. You can do that. 
Um, so going back to this idea here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just getting the, the unit that's repeating in time, and I'm just using that as our baseline area. Okay, in that case, what that means is that where I have my ones here, I'm just, you know, it's equivalent of leaving just the area there. That's equivalent. Okay, and over here, same thing, I'm leaving the area here. But because the brick and the mortar, they're not going to have the full area, so it's not going to be, in other words, this area here, right? So this full area here, which is the area that I see if I look in this direction here, this area here, this brick one here. If I look for the insulating board or for the concrete, they're both going to have that area of one meter squared that I determined. But if I look in the brick and the mortar, what I see is that only a fraction of the area is mortar, and only the remaining fraction is brick. What is that fraction? Well, because the um, the distance here, the, the the depth here is going to be the same for both of them. This is the depth, by the way. This is the depth, right? And this is the height here. Okay, because the depth is going to be the same for both, the difference is only in the height, right? So that means that the area that the brick occupies is just 75 divided by the 85 in height, okay? Because the area of the brick, so the area of the brick will be the 75 times my depth. The area of the mortar will be the 10 times the depth. Okay? So the ratio between them, we know that the sum of them, if we sum up area of brick plus area of mortar, we're going to get the 1 meter squared that we determine, right? So because of this relationship, then it means that we can further specify that the area of the brick is just, you know, the ratio of 75 over 85 of that 1 uh, meter squared. So that's what we're doing here. Okay? So let me just remove where I have the ones, and I'm just going to have my area with me the whole time. So all these numbers that I found all these numbers that I found are actually divided by the area, and my units are all kilowatts meter squared. Sorry, Kelvin meter squared by watts. And just to be sure, you can do it either way. Either way is completely fine. What you're doing is the same thing, okay? Brilliant. So now, now we're converting where we have the, the brick and the mortar, we're converting to the equivalent unit, like on the previous video. That's the same. All that doesn't change. Um, what does change is that when we get to this point here, we're converting from this point to this point because we have those two extra resistances, the convective ones. Then it means that uh, it means that I need to sum the two extra ones to be able to find our equivalent resistance for the whole thing, right? If I want to find the sum of them, I need to find I need to sum up with this, and this now has the area, and is given kilo meter squared watts. I need to sum up whatever I found before, so that is 0 .0, 0 0.0 667 or 666. Um, plus whatever we found on the other one, 0.2. Same thing, Kelvin, meter squared. What? And everything is divided by the area. So when we sum them up, the area is still there dividing, and our area is, you know, whatever area we wish. Okay, so what happens here is when we go to apply this, the analogy with the electric circuit, let me get rid of this because this is going to change up. So we, when we go to apply that, what's going to happen is that we don't have R per se. Actually, we do have R per se. It's the sum of all these guys, but it's still per area, right? So if we sum all this, we get about 0.6719 and divided by the area, whatever area we wish. And now when we apply, so when we're substituting this R here into here, what we're going to have is that Q equals the delta T divided by the 0 0.6719 divided by the area, right? So this is the same thing as delta T times area divided by the 0 0.6719. And units all kept the same, right? So this is the Kelvin meter squared, oops, meter squared for watts. So now we can plug uh, the numbers we have. There's, well, actually there's two options here, right? We're after a heat flux, not heat per se. So at this point here, you can divide on both sides of the uh, equation by the area. That's one way of doing it. And then what happens here is this becomes Q dot over A, which we know is the same thing as P flex, small Q. And on this left hand, uh, right hand side, we'll get is we're dividing area by area. So this means that this is just delta T by the 0.6719. Our delta T didn't change, so that's the same still. So it's the 40 minus the 25. And this is going to give me a new number. Just as a reminder, we expect this number to now decrease, right? Because now we have more, we have additional thermal resistances. So there's more things in the way of heat. So therefore, we expect the 32-ish that we had before to now decrease. And it does indeed. We get 22, about 22. So approximately 22.33. And then unit-wise, what happens is we have the Kelvin from the delta T. And on the bottom here, we have the Kelvin, the meter squared, divided by the watts. So the watts go to the top, the watts. And then Kelvins and Kelvins go away, and we're left with watts per meter squared, which is exactly the unit for heat flux 
which is great. Okay, so whether you prefer carrying the you know the unknown with you the whole time or assuming it's one, what you're doing is uh, by the end of it the same thing. It's just a matter that you carry your problem around um, that changes. Okay, in terms of this new addition of the convective uh, resistances, what changes is that well now we have to take into account not only the resistance due to the the wall itself, the heat traveling through this wall here. But we also need to take into account that because it has to go, there's a, a contact between a fluid and a solid here, there will be a convective resistance. So we're taking that into account. And also here, as it's leaving the wall and going into the ambient, whatever that ambient is, there's also fluid here in contact with the solid. So we're taking into contact that in, into account that resistance as well. So that means we're going to have additional resistances, which means that our Q is going to decrease. Because after all, we know that Q is inversely proportional to our thermal resistance. Right? So that does it for this problem. It's just a you know follow-up on the previous one. As per usual, if you have any questions, just let me know. And if you don't, we'll talk soon.